Hey guys, what's up? So, I squat twice a week. Uh, sometimes if I can help it three times a week, I like to keep that frequency pretty high. And that's because ever since I focused exclusively on the big three and less on isolation, and if you do isolation, that's fine, but everybody's program is different. So, I focus exclusively on the big three. I isolate maybe one day a week twice at the most so I'm getting in there, there are some uh, like like Wednesday for example Wednesday is exclusively a bench day that's all I'll do I'll get off work after eight hours and then I'll head straight to the gym and just bench you know a little bit of stretching maybe an ab routine but just just benching so Thursdays I start off my Thursdays are supposed to be arm days but I, I don't just squat on Thursdays to avoid arms, but I do squat because that's the best way I know to get it in because I don't go into the gym on Thursday anyway to get in a serious routine. So I like to squat before I do arms. And <laughs> nine times out of ten, I end up only training arms for about ten minutes, but it's a pretty intense ten minutes. It's kind of like my ab routine. It's, it's straight to the point, no BS. But... So, with the impending potential that I might do the USPA in a few months, I wanted to start squatting with the squat bar. And the squat bar, some of you may know that the squat bar is 10 more pounds than a conventional barbell, which is 45 pounds. So, I'm not entirely sure why that is, which is kind of sad considering how much I love powerlifting, but... The 55 pound bar, it's it's weird. Like, I, it, it's weird, but I love it. It, it sits very, because I've been trying to get into low bar squats, and for most of you, like, you'll notice that low bar has, has your back just so tight, and the bar with all the weight is just, you know, it's kind of cutting into your spine, it feels like sometimes, but... It feels so good the lower you get with the squat bar. It's it's weird. Like most people will look like this because they're squatting high bar. I miss high bar squats, but that was that felt the best when I was going ATG. So with that, I start off I, I, I don't do just the bar because I feel like I lose balance. I lose balance, my heels come up, so I warm up with a plate, so with the buff with the squat bar, pardon me, with the and I did do the buffalo bar, that was pretty fun. But with the squat bar, I warmed up with 145 and then, you know, I work up a plate at a time like usual. The the only reason that that might throw a lot of people off is because they're used to going 135, 225, 315, etc. But this time it's 145, 235 and then 325. So yeah, basic math. Anyway, it was it was a lot of fun, and I've been doing the squat bar for about three weeks now, and I, I can honestly say I actually like it a lot better. It feels better on my back, and it gets nice and low without feeling like it's stabbing into me, because you, you've all seen one of those Saw movies at the end. I think it was like the sixth one where Bobby did basically, uh, he was doing a donkey calf raise, but the blades were going into his traps. That's how squatting usually feels for me. <laughs> I just find that mental block that I need to work through it. But with the squat bar, I don't have to do that. It rests very comfortably on my back, which is very strange. I expected the complete opposite. So I find myself adapting pretty fast. And I'm able to hit 335 for pretty smooth triples, so it I'm, I'm actually liking the, the squat bar. It's insane. I tried it on front squats. That was a total failure. Don't do that. <laughs> Besides, you don't front squat in a competition anyway. So, I warmed up with 145, and I usually only ever do one set because my 10-minute warm-up prior to squats is usually enough to absolutely get everything engaged, get the blood flowing, and just be ready to get under the bar. So, 145, and then I jump up to 235, 
and then 325. And jumping straight up like that, you know, when you're when it's 10 pounds heavier per set, it, it was strange at first, but I felt like it actually worked pretty good. And like it it's strange. I I kind of I kind of prefer getting these side angles for you guys. I, I I really feel like it it demonstrates the form to a pretty good cue. Yeah, getting different angles is hunky dory and whatnot, but I really like the side view. Not totally sure, other than you know making sure that you know your sternum is as upright as possible. My sternum wants to cave all the time, so that's why I have to have the mental cue to keep my back as tight as possible because that way your sternum. When your back is tight, it provides that shelf for the bar to sit on. Most of you know that. But when your back is tight, there's that shelf, and then it, it forces your sternum to just stay nice and upright. So, I mean, my squats these days, like, my squat stance is so wide. It used to be fairly narrow, but that's when I was going ATG and pausing. I still pause, but that's just because I want to make it harder. So, this squat routine was lots of fun. I mean, almost every squat routine is fun for me, even if it doesn't feel that good on certain days, but I wanted to film this one because this is my first squat vlog with the squat bar. And I threw in some buffalo bar squats too because I just wanted to see what all the rant and rave was about with those because all my friends at the at JB Boss, fantastic gym chain, by the way. Fantastic business, love it. But... All my friends were talking about how much they loved the squat, the, the buffalo bar. And, and it's loved because of the arch feature that it has. It, it was kind of strange for me. Like, it changes everything. Bar placement, feeling, getting under it. it. It took me a little bit more time to get under the buffalo bar than it did the squat bar. But anyways, the workout was lots of fun. And then... I've been using that massage machine a lot more. It's it's a handheld device. I uploaded it in my last video. Here it is again. And it it's weird. It it really it gets deep. I don't think anything will ever, you know, come close to simulating an actual pair of hands from an expert, but it, it works pretty nicely. I strongly recommend it. Stretching is so important, guys. And when you're done squatting, your legs when you're done training legs, your legs are very tight. They're so ready to be stretched. That's the best time to do it. So that was my squat routine. It was so much fun. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. And hopefully you guys can, you know, get an experience for yourself. I know every gym will vary. And you won't have as many barbell types as my gym does. But just, you know... Just something to take under consideration for your next squat routine. And by the way, there's by mental cues, I mean, for example, so it, it all starts before you even get under the bar. So I never film it, but something that I do is I get I like to I imagine the bar on my back and I get as tight as I can, just making sure that that's how it feels when I get under the bar. And then I do breathing exercises to compress my abdominal wall against the belt so that that way when I'm coming down, I get that necessary support from the belt, which is why we use it in the first place. So that that way the negative feels great and then the positive feels even better. So those mental cues. And, and another, critical, another critical cue is when you get under the bar, if you if you're an if you're an advanced squatter, then you already know that unracking the bar takes the most time. Getting a feel for it, getting it to the right place on your back, making sure that your hands are gripping the bar as hard as possible, and you know even stepping out, it should only take it should only take about two or three steps for maximum power and energy for that rep. Anyway, those are good examples of mental cues and. Hopefully you guys keep up progress, and I would love to see updates from any of you guys. Thanks.